you're struggling or if you've ever struggled through domestic violence, you know silence only makes it worse. And tonight, this well-known name in our community is calling on you to speak up. Cape Coral's only female mayor saw some of her darkest days during her last few months in office. She was under an internal investigation in which she was cleared, but she was also dealing with trouble in her private life. Now, in a rare interview, Marnie Sawicki tells me she isn't ashamed. In fact, she wants others to hear her story if, if it will keep them away from the domestic abuse she survived. Now, a warning for you tonight, some of the video you're about to see is graphic. June 24th, 2017, then Cape Coral Mayor Marnie Sawicki and her now ex, Kenneth Retzer, a former Cape Coral fire captain, were at the mayor's conference in Miami Beach. They had a couple of drinks at the hotel bar. Shortly after, this happened. Michael, of course you, from your <laughs> pimp. Leave me alone. Your pimp. Here's more pimp shoes. <laughs> more oh, it's pimp. Leave me alone. Pimp. Leave me alone. One of the things I started to do was write down the names he would call me because I'm like, you know, I'd write them down and then he would go rip them up. And the next day I would get the, I didn't say that. I didn't say it like that or, you know, and then I'm like, am I going crazy? I think I'm going crazy because he's, I'm sure he said that. And so I started to record. Was that the final straw? It had to be. The police report says that Retzer was arrested that night after he called 911 himself. Sawicki described as having a noticeable swelling above her left eye and on her chin. It also states that Sawicki said that Retzer straddled her and placed his hands over her throat. Sawicki said that she began to have difficulty breathing. Retzer then began to strike Sawicki in the face and head with a closed right fist. To say Sawicki and Retzer had a tumultuous relationship is an understatement. They started dating in 2015 and married a year later. She compares their relationship to a merry-go-round, going back to each other every three to four months and in a consistent violation of trust. Even after they divorced, they reconciled, up until that mayor's conference in Miami Beach. A lot of the things with my ex was it, it does look crazy in public when you're just looking at it from the outside. Um, but inside, it was, it was just me trying to manage the uh, turmoil. Here we're going along, and I'm with him, we're talking, and then this incident happens. He's taken off, and I've literally, I have not spoke to him since. At first, Sawicki didn't acknowledge her private life. Then, in what seemed to be an about face, she decided to open up about it. There's power in telling your story. They're going to find out anyway. Everything's public record up until November. That's the month she left office and focused on her survival. That meant fully coming out of an unhealthy relationship and seeing it to the end, a hearing date. Difficult on my kids, difficult on on me, difficult on friendships. Teaching her one of the hardest lessons she's had to learn. Not everyone that's in your boat is rowing with you. You know, some are drilling holes. Two plus years since that defining moment in Miami Beach, Sawicki has purged some personal relationships, but can now say she's in a better place. I do a lot of I am, I am affirmation stuff, um, but I am strong and I am going to get through it. After walking the walk, Sawicki is now armed with her 501c3 for her nonprofit Indigo Sky, helping victims of domestic violence. She says her power is in empowering other women. Valuing yourself enough to know when to say that I'm not okay with that and I'm not going to put up with it and I wish you well but I'm walking away. Statistics show the average number of times a woman goes back to her abuser is seven. Oh, there's a reason for that. It's because they, are, they don't have that support. And I really think we're, we'll be the missing piece. Why should it be you? Yeah, and, and my, my answer back would be, why didn't someone else do it then? Um, I'm not one to sit back and say, you know, God, this is a, just an awful experience. And, Hopefully someone else is going to fix that for it, you know. <laughs> I'm not that person. So Wiki also looks at her personal life playing out in public as a blessing in disguise. And I say that because there is nothing now in my past. There's nothing that um, I'm ashamed of. There's nothing that isn't already out there that I can't go, 
uh, yeah, that happened. As far as no longer being in the public eye, Sawicki says she is more than okay with that. And they can believe all they want. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> I just don't. I'm going to be good no matter what moving forward. I know I have a lot to do and a lot of things that are lot that are still to do. Lots of things that uh, for on protecting women. Well, as part of Retzer's sentencing, Marnie wrote a victim impact statement. Too long to include in this report, but it is a revealing account of her story. You can read that on our website, fox4now.com. There, you can also learn more about her nonprofit, Indigo Sky. And if you find yourself or know someone in a situation of domestic violence, again, there is help out there. We have listed several sources on our website that you can reach out to.